So welcome to the electron charge to mass ratio experiment. So a previous video showed you how to log into this. This is what things look like once you have gotten control of the apparatus from the operator. First, let me give you a little explainer about what you're seeing here. Over here, we've got a glass tube, and I'll zoom in on that later. And in front of it and behind it, there are these copper coils. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to run a current through those copper coils. That will create a magnetic field. And because these coils are circular and there's two of them, that's going to create a magnetic field that's constant in direction. So we'll be able to change the strength of the magnetic field by changing how much current we run through it, but the direction will always stay constant inside that glass tube. Now there are two different cameras with several presets. Right now we're on camera one and preset one. So that shows us the exterior of the device. And if I go to camera preset five, that zooms in on the tube. Now when I turn on the heater to actually start the experiment, it's gonna turn off the room lights so that we can see the electron beam better. So I'm gonna explain things right now while the room lights are still on. Inside this glass tube, there's actually three things that are important. One of them is that there's a little glass ruler and there's little tick marks on it. And we're gonna be able to read those. So we use this to find out the diameter of the path that the electrons take. The other thing is over here on the right hand side, there is a heater which is going to heat up a piece of metal and that boils off electrons to create a little gas of free electrons inside the tube. And there's also a cathode and an anode. These are going to accelerate the electrons into a straight beam. I'm going to show you that later. Now inside this glass tube, there is a low pressure gas of helium. And when the electrons are accelerated through that gas, the gas starts to glow. So that's what's going to allow us to see the path the electrons take, because we'll see the gas glowing where they passed. The heater is going to turn off the room lights. So just before I do that, here on the ruler, there's these tick marks, and they're in centimeters. So we'll be able to measure the diameter of the electron beam in centimeters. Preset 6, here on camera 1, zooms right in on that ruler. So you can see 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 centimeters, and then we can't go any larger than that because that's as big as the tube is. So we'll be using this later. So zooming out again, the first thing we're going to want to do is turn on the heater. So that's this yellow button right here. So I click that, and you want to do that pretty much as soon as you get onto the experiment because it might take a minute for the heater to warm up. So we can actually see it glowing over here. There is a timer on this. If it ever turns itself off, you could just turn the heater back on again. The next thing you're going to do is you're going to turn up the accelerating voltage. So that's the cathode and anode. That's going to accelerate the electrons straight down, and you're going to see a little blue beam of light over here on the right-hand side once I start doing that. So I'm going to turn up the beam voltage now using this slider bar. And you see that beam of blue light over here. Now, right now, the electrons are hitting the glass, which is actually not good for the glass. So fairly soon after you do that, you want to also turn up the coil current. So that turns up the current that's passing through those copper coils, which creates a magnetic field which bends the electron beam into a circle. So I'm going to adjust this a little bit to have a fairly large circle. And the purpose of this experiment, what we're trying to do is we're trying to study this interplay between the accelerating voltage of the electrons, so the voltage that accelerates them into a straight beam, and the coil current, which sets the magnetic field strength, and also the radius of this circle that the electrons move in. So we're ready to take data now. We need three quantities. We need the beam voltage, we need the coil current, and we need the radius of this circle. So to get the beam voltage, we want to go to preset 4. And that takes me to this scale here. Now our voltage can go up to 500 volts. So to take a reading, what we're going to do is we're going to read it off of this bottom scale here. But you have to remember to multiply the number you get by 200. So 1 becomes 200, 2 becomes 400, 3 becomes 600, and so on. And you want to read the needle position off of this. There is a little bit of a shadow here, which makes it confusing, but you can trace the needle here and take a reading off of this scale as accurately as you can. So to me, this looks like it's approximately at 1.26 or 1.27. I would multiply that by 200 to get my voltage. And remember to estimate an uncertainty on this value. You're also going to want the coil current. So for that, you go to preset 3. And that takes you to this scale. 
Now our coil current goes up to 2 amps, so you're going to take your reading off of this top scale, but you don't need to multiply it by anything to convert. So again, there's a bit of a shadow, but you can trace the needle up and see what your measurement is, and to me this looks approximately like it's at 1.3, almost exactly. But again, you want to estimate an uncertainty on this value. Finally, the last thing you want to measure is the diameter of your beam path. So you go back to preset 5, and this shows us the whole tube, but we want to zoom in more. So let's actually go to preset 6, which zooms in properly. So now we can see where that beam is actually striking the ruler, and we can make an estimate of what the diameter of the beam is. So to me, this looks like it's a little past 9.5, so I would estimate 9.6 perhaps. And if you're wondering what happened right there, the timer ran out, so I'm just going to turn the heater back on, and that's going to restart the experiment for me. So it might take a moment to warm up, but again, I can then see that my beam is going to about 9.6 centimeters. And remember, you need to come up with an uncertainty on this. So the beam is a little bit fuzzy. It's sometimes a little hard to read the ruler. Come up with what you think is a reasonable uncertainty for this measurement. And zooming out again, I'll just remind you that we are measuring the diameter here, but the quantity we actually want is the radius. So you'll measure the diameter off the ruler, divide by 2 to get a radius, and then think about what you need to do to the uncertainty as well. When you're done with everything, you can turn these two slider bars right to minimum, turn off the heater, which turns on the room light, and then go back to preset 1 on camera 1. And now everything is ready for the next student, so you can tell the operator that you're done. Good luck with your experiment.